I've had two paranormal things happen to me. The first story takes place in my freshman year at college. I was in bed when I heard my roommate say, Uh, look up at the ceiling. I looked, and there were six green, glowing handprints staggered across the ceiling like somebody had been crawling across it. And the handprints were huge. We ran to the dorm room next door and told our neighbors we thought our room was being haunted, but they thought we were pranking them, so we brought them back to our room to show them. But now, there were three more handprints on the ceiling and the wall, and it looked like they were trying to crawl to the light switch. We all kind of freaked out, and we grabbed some towels and tried wiping them away. And it seemed to work. They disappeared once we wiped everything down. Then we all sat down on the bunk beds and talked about how weird that was. And then we looked up, and all nine handprints were back, plus six more. The new ones appeared right over the bunk beds where we were sitting, but this time we couldn't wipe them away. We eventually fell asleep with the handprints still there, and I slept rather soundly that night, which is rather odd considering the circumstances. And here's the second story. I was 20 years old and home for winter break. I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw someone standing in my room. My eyes weren't yet adjusted to the darkness, so I could only make out that it was in the shape of a female and I assumed it was my mother, so I asked her what she was doing, but I got no reply. I thought that was weird, so I started to get worried and I asked her again what she was doing in my room, and again, I got no reply. My eyes then began to adjust to the darkness, and I saw that it was a female in a long white nightgown standing about three feet from my bed. I kept looking, and I noticed that it wasn't a woman, but a girl of maybe 14 years of age, and she was just standing there. Her eyes were fixed on me, and she began to slowly rotate to the left, with her head cocked over her shoulder, staring at me. It was as if she was hanging from the ceiling, and staring at me while she rotated. I know this sounds crazy. I thought so at the time. I told myself it was just a waking dream and that it wasn't happening at all. I tried to force myself to stay there and stare at her, thinking she would go away if I did. But I only lasted about five more seconds, then I ran out of my room and into my parents' room. That's right. A 20-year-old guy ran to mommy and daddy at three in the morning, screaming about a ghost in his room. Of course, when we went back to look, nothing was there. That was most likely a waking dream. But man, was I scared. I was super excited to get my first apartment. It was in an old antebellum mansion that was split into four units. It was a very cool place to live. However, every time I was taking a shower, I would get this overwhelming feeling that somebody was watching me. Then came the dreams. I kept dreaming about this old lady in a pink nightgown. Sometimes she would just look frail and sweet, but other times... She said I should go with her, but she never said where we would go. Sometimes the dreams were terrifying, and the old lady's eye sockets were empty. Her hair would be greasy, stringy, and falling out. Her mouth looked like it was open in a perpetual scream, and she'd claw at the air trying to grab me. The longer I lived there, the more menacing the dreams got, and that feeling of being watched in the shower increased dramatically. I could no longer close my eyes in the shower. I know how it sounds, but I had this overwhelming feeling that if I closed my eyes for too long, I would die or lose my soul. I finally gave my notice and left. After moving out, I was discussing this with a friend of mine who had recently moved into a house across the street from my old building. I was trying to laugh it off but he said he had a friend that used to live in the apartment above mine several years ago. He said an old lady had died in what used to be my apartment, and since then, 
nobody would live there for more than a couple of months at a time. The building recently burned down. The fire started in my old apartment. They don't know what started the fire, but I'm betting that old lady had a hand in it. My family owns a magic shop located in a 200-year-old log cabin, and they live over the store. My parents would often go on vacation in January and leave me to take care of the store. I was already out of the house and living on my own, so when I watched the store, I would just sleep there to save myself the driving back and forth. That cabin always gave me the creeps. It never felt like I was alone, and I hated being there at night. Something was off about that house. It just felt wrong. It was like I could see something staring back at me from the dark rooms. I would hear things moving around, and doors would open and close on their own. One night as I got ready for bed, I locked the door to my room and went to sleep. Around 2 a.m., I was awoken by the sound of something big and heavy being thrown up the stairs. Not down, up. Then the door to my room started getting banged on repeatedly, like somebody was hitting it with both fists over and over again. I grabbed the knife that I keep next to my bed for protection and stood up, ready to attack anyone who came through that door, when suddenly, it all just stopped. No more banging, no more movement, no more anything. I stood there for several minutes before I walked over to the door and shoved a bookcase in front of it. I then sat in a chair on the opposite side of the room with a knife, watching that door for probably another hour. I fell asleep on that chair with the knife still in my hand. The next morning, I cautiously checked out the house. The doors and windows were all still locked, and the alarm system was still on. There was no one in the house, and nothing was out of place. It still scares the life out of me every time I think about it. When I was a child, my family moved into a large 5,000-square-foot, two-story home. Both of my parents worked so I was often alone in the house after school. One early evening in the winter, I came home and the house was still dark. I called out, Mom? And I heard her sing-songy voice call back, Yes! From upstairs. I called out to her again as I climbed the stairs to see which room she was in. And again, I heard that same sing-songy, Yes! Reply. It sounded like she was in the bedroom at the far end of the hall with the door closed, and for some reason, I felt very uneasy about that. But I figured once I saw my mother, I would feel better and the uneasiness would go away. I was just about to reach for the doorknob to let myself in the room when I heard the front door downstairs open and my mother's voice call out, Sweetie, are you home? In a cheery voice. I jumped back away from the door and ran to the stairs. I glanced back over my shoulder before going down, and I saw the bedroom door slowly open up a crack. For a brief moment, I saw something strange in there. I don't know what it was, but it was staring at me. My parents' house is haunted. Prior to us owning it, it was a rental home, so we don't have a clear idea of all who have lived there in the past. It's a large house with three bedrooms on the main floor and two in the basement. My bedroom was located beneath the guest room, which we affectionately called the orange room, for its wall color. There's something very unnerving about that room. If you go in there, you always feel like you're being watched, and our animals won't go near it. 
There's a long hallway leading down to that room, and my parents' bedroom is across from it. On occasion, we'd all be in the basement watching a movie, only to hear footsteps going down that hallway. And it's not the house settling either. These were actual heavy footsteps. To add to the creepiness factor, when my parents would shut and lock their bedroom door at night, they'd wake up every morning to find it wide open. They'd blame it on the cat and leave it at that. But how does a cat unlock a door? After I moved out, my parents were dog-sitting my new puppy when I was out of town, and for some reason, they thought it was a good idea to lock her in the orange room overnight. Sometime around 3 a.m., the dog escaped from the room in a panic. She hopped onto my parents' bed and was shaking uncontrollably. We still don't know how she got that door unlocked. And my parents had their door locked too, so how did she get in? Prior to that night, any time we'd visit, we noticed that she would stare blankly down the hallway towards the orange room and growl. We thought she was just afraid of shadows. Another odd occurrence? My dad used to complain that somebody touched his feet every night. He said it was like somebody walked past the end of the bed and tickled his feet for a few seconds before stopping. And I've had the feeling that somebody is sitting on the edge of my bed, only to find no one there when I turn the light on. Based on what we know, the land was once inhabited by Native Americans, but there's no way of telling what the true history of the property really is. When I was a kid, my family put a four-foot-tall porcelain doll in my room. My dad eventually moved the doll to the corner of the room and covered it up with the sheet because it scared me so much. One night around 3 a.m., I woke up and I looked over and saw the sheet was on the floor and the doll was standing in the middle of the room. I ran downstairs and stayed there till morning. After that, my dad put the doll in the closet. But the next night, I woke up to the sound of thumping coming from inside the closet. My dad then moved the doll to the spare room downstairs. But after a few months, I woke up at 2 a.m. to the sound of the vacuum cleaner running. I went downstairs to ask my parents why they were cleaning in the middle of the night. As soon as I opened the door to the spare room where the vacuum cleaner is kept, the sound of the vacuum stopped. The doll was standing in the corner, and there were things thrown all around the room. And the vacuum cleaner wasn't even plugged in. Okay, I think I speak for everyone when I say... That dad exhibited some A1 gold medal parenting. Why not just throw the doll away when you knew your daughter was afraid of it the first time? You can do better, Dad. Really. You can do better. One night, I awoke paralyzed. I looked over and standing at the window was the dark shape of a man watching me. In my head, I heard his voice say, Come with me. Then I slowly felt myself dying, or what I thought the dying experience would feel like. My breathing stopped and I could feel my heart beating slower and slower. I was terrified, and with every ounce of energy I had, I forced my body to sit up. And the moment I sat up in bed, the apparition disappeared. I felt completely physically drained, and I noticed that the time was around 3.15 a.m. This happened a couple of more nights during that month, and once I almost gave in and followed him. The death sensation was scary at first, but it was also exciting at the same time. Kind of like when you're on that first hill of a roller coaster. You're apprehensive, but excited. 
Well, I ended up moving from place to place trying to get rid of that thing. But it always seems to find me within a few months, no matter where I go. I just want to be left alone. You have no idea how tiring it is to be haunted sometimes. When the house we live in today was for sale, we took a tour of the place with our realtor. The 80-year-old lady who lived there at the time remained in the home while we did our walkthrough. She stayed in a small corner bedroom on the first floor, reading a book while we looked around. My wife and I found it strange that she hung out in that room and not the master bedroom. The bed in the master didn't look like it had been slept in for a long time, and it was clear that the master bath hadn't been used either. Once we bought the house, our neighbor told us that the old lady didn't like spending time in the master suite anymore, because that's where her husband Ray had died. Fast forward a few years. My wife was gone for the day, so it was just me and my three-year-old son in the house. I had him playing in our bedroom while I took a quick shower. He had gotten a new toy a few days earlier, but he was having a little trouble figuring out how to use it. I went in the shower and I left him on the bed with that toy and a few others. While in the shower, I thought I heard him talking to someone and figured my wife had come home early. But when I was done, I discovered it was still just the two of us home alone. My son was sitting on the bed, now proficiently working the new toy. I told him I was really proud of him for figuring it out, and he said, Oh, it's easy now. Grandpa Ray showed me how. One cold night, when I was a teenager home alone, I was blaring music through my headphones. Since I was home alone, I locked all the doors. As one song faded to an end, I heard pounding on the interior garage door, and I heard someone calling out my name. I immediately jumped up and ran downstairs to open it. The banging on the door was so furious, and the calling of my name so loud, I thought my dad must be really angry with me for some reason. Maybe he was mad that I locked the door and he was locked out. I got to the door and swung it open, only to find the garage empty and dark. The only sound was the wind outside. I just stared into the emptiness, wondering what the hell it was that I heard. I got scared and slammed the door shut, and I was looking over my shoulder for the rest of the night. I had just graduated from college and was living with my parents again, in a house where weird things were always happening. It was 3 a.m., and I was working as a freelance video editor. I was editing a lo-fi and very, very bad music video for a local artist at my desk in the bedroom. My back was to the bed behind me. My dog was sleeping at my feet. After about an hour of watching that music video over and over again, and listening to that same song on repeat for days, I decided to put the music on mute and just work on the special effects. Then I heard, click, click. The lamp next to my bed, which had one of those twisting switches, turned on, then off again, by itself. My dog jumped up, and his eyes were transfixed, staring directly at the space above the lamp next to my bed. I thought I was imagining what just happened. Maybe I was just tired. I turned around to continue my work. But then it happened again. Click, 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 click. On, off, on, off. Twice. The dog started growling now. The hair on the back of his neck stood up, and his gaze hadn't moved once since the click started. I stared in the direction of the lamp and a chill ran down my spine as the room became very cold. 
The dog was still growling as I slowly stood up. Click, 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 click. On, off, on, off, on, off. The dog had started to bark, and the light was flickering on and off repeatedly and quickly. So I picked up my dog and ran into my sister's room to sleep on the floor. The next day, I moved all of my stuff to the guest room. Thank you so much for listening tonight and for being part of my family of darkness. Now click on the screen above to hear more stories like this so you can stay scared until we meet again, my friends. <laughs>